Hi, I'm Brandon Bueller. I'm engineer and production supervisor here at Radwell International. Today I'm going to teach you how to make servo cables, power and feedback. Let's go. All right, before you begin, you want to select which connector you'll need for your project. So you will have to figure out the connector itself, the gauge wire, and then what type of connection point you want. This type is a solder cup where you'll actually solder directly to the pin that's already mounted inside of the connector. You also have this type that you can use a crimp style pin that actually will click in after you crimp it onto your wire or a solder type plug-in. So this, this type you'll actually solder into this cup and then also press it in when you have it all connected. These different types also go for your D-sub connectors. This is a 15 pin D-sub with solder type connections. Um, one other connection type is a terminal type. This is my favorite because it's the easiest to change and modify if you have to. And it's also the easiest to put together because there's no soldering re required. So to begin, we're gonna start with the power cable. So the first thing I like to do is actually mount the connector inside of a table vise just to keep it nice and still when you're doing your soldering. <clears throat> the next thing you want to do is find the correct cable and gauge for what you're going to be using this on. So one thing I like to do before you start is you want to figure out how far back to strip it. The way I do that is I will semi put the connector head together here then this will go actually on the back of it so go like that so I would want to strip it back about that much in order for the strain relief to actually grab the cable So once you have it, it stripped back, now you can strip the wires. So the first thing I like to do after I strip it is tin all of the wire ends. This is just applying a little bit of solder and this will keep the multi-core wire from fraying so now my wires are tinned and before you start you want to make sure you put on all the correct pieces here onto the cable before you actually solder it. This is a power cable, so this end is empty, so I don't have to put it on ahead of time, but if you are doing a feedback cable that has two ends on it, maybe a D-sub on one side and a military style connector on the other, if you forget this step, you will be unsoldering your whole connector and redoing it again. The next thing I like to do, now there's many different ways that you can do this, but this is my favorite way of doing it, is filling the solder cup with solder, tinning the wires, but then all I have to do to connect them is give it a little bit of heat and then press the wire into place. This also keeps a lot of the heat off of the cable itself a good thing for longevity. I'm going to cut a little bit of heat shrink for each wire. So the next tip I will share with you is depending on which way your solder cups are facing, so they're facing me right now, I always like to start at the back left corner. Because I'm righty, I hold the soldering iron with my right hand 
that's the best one to start with because if you start with this one then you have your soldering iron going across the other wire if you start with the two fronts then they're in the way for your two backs so once once the solder melts you can slip the wire into place hold it there let it set now one is soldered. Then I will go to the next back one, which is right here. So next we're gonna use the heat gun to actually shrink the heat shrink onto the cable keep it from arcing to the other contacts. So now you're gonna want to put all the pieces back together here. So the first thing is the collar. and then tighten the strain relief onto the wire. And that is how you make a power cable for a servo motor. So now we're gonna make the feedback cable. This is a resolver cable for a servo drive. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use the crimp on pins. For this, you're gonna to need to strip back the wire as I already have, and you're gonna to have to get the correct crimper for these crimp contacts. So I like to get it in and set it so it's sticking out of that side, but your tabs in the back are around for the strain relief and for where the wire actually has to bite to the pin. Once you have it in there, and you're all the way in, you can crimp down until it releases. And now you have a nice crimped on wire here. So you'll go and do that to all of the wires in here. And when you're done, these are all numbered. You can put what color you want go into what connection here. So now that you've made all your connections, you can start to put the shielding, wrap that around the ring. You wanna bring your strain relief up and your strain relief backer up to it. Take it out of here. And then you put this cover on. clicks into place, you wanna bring this all the way up. And now you can slide on your front coupling here. What you wanna remember is this can be clocked five degrees to the left or right or centered with the straight pins there. So I want it straight. So I'm gonna make sure that the tab or keying inside of here is lined up straight with the number nine pin. Make sure that's pushed all the way in, up and tight. And you can screw on the back. It'll act as a strain relief. So now that we have this side done, I'd like to connect to my other side. Now my other side consists 
of a nine pin D sub connector, male. I'm going to go with the terminal style ones. And then you'll also need your pin out. So now that I have my pin out, this side would be the 12 pin military M23 connector, which is the one that we just made. And then this side is the nine pin D sub male. And then up here is the color code for this. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do again, is figure out how far back I wanna cut these wires. So I'm only gonna strip back the colors that I need here. Now, I will connect the blue wire, which is one on the M23 connector, to one on the D-sub 9-pin. And two is white, and two will go to two. Now three yellow. So go to three on this side. Pink. We'll go to five. Red will go to eight. Green to six, orange to nine, gray to seven, and then my shield will go to five here. Once you have all your connections, you can cut back your extra wires that you may or may not have. and then put your string relief on. After you do that, you can click on your covers. And there you have it. You have the 12 pin M23 connector going to your nine pin D sub connector. For more information on Radwell, visit us at radwell.com and connect with us on social media. Thank you, have a nice day.